Ah, okay. Your Pokedex quest may fail without love for your Pokemon. I think this may be how that helps your quest. A Poke Flute. Upon hearing Poke Flute, sleeping Pokemon will spring awake. It works on all sleeping Pokemon. We're now actually going to an area where we could have done bef could have gone before. We could have gone many times before. We just haven't. Because I decided to go another way. South of Lavender Town, Route 12. Actually, is there a person there at the edge? No, there is not. It's another gatehouse, but just going north to the south, which you don't see too often. Some more binoculars in here. It's Pokemon Tower! Yeah, we just went there. Pokemon's ashes are stored in Pokemon Tower. You can have this TM! Swift. Very accurate. Yes, indeed, it skips the accuracy check. Only 60 power, not too powerful, but let's see if anything can learn it. Not everything except for Koops. Not bad. Amigo already has Bite. That way Aragorn has a normal move that... Um, isn't double-edged, or maybe Aragorn. Or Propane uh, to go over Quick Attack. I'll go Aragorn, so that that way it has, it, again, for things that resist poison, or uh, resist fighting, it has a normal move to use, and if it doesn't want to recoil, and so it can finish it off, or if the opponent has used something like Double Team or Sand Attack, so if you fight a rival again, we might be able to use that. Then again, Double Kick might deal a lot more damage. But we do now have Swift on Aragorn. Double kick, double edge, meditated sword. The route continues south of here. To this man, who has a big bite. Same with a goldeen. Aragorn finally gets to use double kick. And critically kicks them in the face. I like the music on this route. What do you think of it? There's an item there. I believe that's a TM of a very interesting money-related TM. Money-related move. We can't quite get there yet because we can't exactly cross water because obviously we can't swim. Be patient. Fishing's a waiting game. I'm not sure if Swift will be enough here, but let's give it a try. Actually, enough. Tentacles' physical defense isn't that great, it has really good special defense. Not Physical defense isn't as high in Aragorn. Hitmonlee does have a great physical base attack stat of 120, which is super high. And Swift, even though it's a special attack in Generation 4 onwards, it's a normal type move there for physical in this generation. Let's just go with double kick against this one. Level 33! Trying to rolling kick. 
Let's remind, let's remind myself what that does. I want to say 60 power, 85 accuracy. 30% chance to flinch. Okay, but it, it's 60 power, so effectively it's the same as double kick. And double kick is 100 accurate. 100% accurate. So... No, I, I'm not going to learn. I actually want to keep meditate. This is just a lesser accurate double kick that happens to be able to flinch, but the, the loss of 15% accuracy, especially from a, go, coming from a 100% accurate move, it's not worth it. That's up your round. Let's use Koops against some water types, which Koops might not be great against them. But they can do something, I guess. be able to get a flinch out of this. I didn't expect Seismic Toss to be enough, it'll probably be around the same as Bite. Yeah, it's about the same. Let's just use Water Gun, even though it's not very effective, I just want to finish it off with a Water Move. There we go. This might be the last fisherman, maybe one more after this. I'd really like grass type at this point, even though I could have used Amiga with Thunderbolt. Amiga's a bit higher level, so that's why I'm not using it. Even if um, Amiga probably is the optimal Pokemon to use here, and Koop's the least optimal. Actually, no. Propane's the least optimal, but. It's probably um, the most optimal to use Amigo. But if I always use what is the most optimal, then some Pokemon may out-level some others. Like here I had the 33s and the two others were level 31, I think. That isn't... I, I don't find that to be a very big of a deal, but I do try to then use Pokemon that are a bit lower level, even against something that isn't that great against. Like I would have kept using Wardrobe probably in this fight, but knowing Shell has more physical defense, um, then most of the water type Pokemon, I'd set to switch to Amigo and get the easier KO. And now I'll just continue using it. So having them a bit out-level each other, not really that big of a deal, but I try to keep them as close as possible. That's how I play Pokemon. I can still read the chat. The only button I really use there is the rate button, so. Hey! Snorlax! I know what you look like because the guy in the SSN told me that you were a Snorlax. It's a sleeping Pokemon. It's, just, it's blocking the way. I can't get through. There was one to the West of Celadon as well. But wait. Didn't we just get... Snorlax woke up and it attacked in a grumpy rage. Ooh, let's battle. Ice Beam. And it gives rest. Yeah, so Snorlax has a move called Rest, which not only rids it of any um, non-volatile status, or uh, primary status, as I call it, like Poison or Paralysis, uh, or Burn, 
It also fully heals its HP. And then it can't attack for two turns. It'll wake up in the second turn, because you can't attack on the turn you wake up in this game. And then it can attack again, which includes being able to use rest once more. So I'm hoping just to be able to freeze it. Nope, rest. Ice beam. Swark has great stats, so this might take a while. Um Pokeball? Nope. See how much seismic toss does. Sonic has a lot of HP, but maybe it'll do more damage this way than through a special. It's about the same, maybe. And it's slapped again. Maybe I'll just use Seismic Toss until he's awake, so I can use Ice Beam for the chance to freeze. Because not only does that make him impossible to use Rest, or anything else, but really Rest, because then it just heals itself again. But also, Freeze actually... At least in Gen 2 and onwards, not sure how the calculation works in Gen 1, but it'll be around doubling the chances to catch a Pokemon. If a wild Pokemon is frozen or asleep, it's two times catch chance, any other non-volatile status, 1.5 times, so poison, burn, and uh, paralysis. Wait, how did I just get that one HP damage? Did I already have that, or did something just happen? Did I miss something? Pretty sure the snow has only used rest so far. It knows other moves. I don't remember which moves, but it knows other moves. Like Amnesia, which makes Ice Beam not as strong. So it used Rest again. Amnesia is actually one of the best moves in the game, because it increases your special stat by two stages, which after one use effectively doubles it. Does it mean that it's quadrupled after the second use? No. It'll be tripled then and then quadrupled. But it is a really good special stat, which means both special attack and special defense, if you use the terms from later games. And this is especially useful for Pokemon that use special moves. Snorlax uses more physical moves, its base special stat isn't that great, but it's still there. It can learn some special moves, so probably want to be afraid of any anything that uses amnesia and can use special moves. Especially Mewtwo, because Mewtwo is already like Mewtwo is already strong, but because of how good Mewtwo being the highest base out of all Pokemon. Plus it being a psychic type, which is definitely the most powerful type in this game due to how type matchups, the type matchups, and how weak uh, the moves of its only weakness are. Plus the fact that it had access to amnesia and a huge, very strong special attack move pool. Mewtwo is easily the best Pokemon in the game, no question. Great ball. Saves me a slot in the, uh, in the bag now as well. Let's freeze it. Come on. Freeze the Norlax. Nope, you gotta increase the special. One more chance. No. Seismic toss. Just don't use rest. You probably have a few more power points for it. Of course use rest. But when you use rest. Um, Aragorn, you can use Double Kick, that hits Snorlax harder. I'm not sure how much harder, but harder. Do you need to be wary of the critical hit? Let's do Double Kick, how much damage that deals. Oh. I did say I need to be wary of the critical hit, so that's how much that does. Okay, so that's defeated. Yay! To return to the mountains. Which mountains? Rock Tunnel? Well, let's fly to Celadon City.
We heal up a Pokemon, really just to get Ice Beam back, but I don't expect to use it much. I'm just going to use Aragorn. Because Aragorn is useful against Snorlax. Hello, other Snorlax. Poker flute. Just like the last one, it wasn't happy about being disturbed in its sleep. And it wakes up and attacks us. Same level, same stats. And hopefully he doesn't get hit by a critical hit. That's very good damage. I just don't use rest. Or actually, if it would have used rest and then I double kicked it without a crit again, it would have been asleep at that low health. Which would actually be great. Pokeball! Missed the Pokemon? What? Oh yeah, that's a thing, isn't it, in this game? Um, let's remember the details about that. I'm actually just going to look that up. Yeah, it's as I remembered, this thing that happened. Uh, it basically just means that Snorlax is very hard to catch. I can still catch it. It's just, this can, ha this can show up if it's really hard to capture. Except for right now. Got ourselves a Snorlax. I just had to look something up, and it was like, no, you can't look that up. That's cheating. That's not allowed. No, because I, I can actually be caught. I will prove it to you. And then it was in my Pokeball, and my plan worked. Perfectly. Snorlax, the sleeping Pokemon. Very lazy. Just eats and sleeps. As its rotund bug bulk builds, it becomes steadily more slothful. She'll give you a nickname. I shall call you Sheriff. Sheriff the Snorlax. With that done. We have access to new areas, so... Ducks, if you would please fly us to Vermilion City. So from there, we shall go on to the next part of our adventure. We are back here. We are on Route 12 once more. Because there's a trainer we can fight. And there's actually that house you can see right there at the bottom. We want to go there. Something we can obtain, there's something cool. First, a battle against someone whose speciality is electricity. Engineer, perhaps? With a magnemite? No, it's a rocker with a volto. Go, Sheriff! <laughs> yes, you may have guessed it before. Let me be honest, let me know who guessed it. I sneakily did something which I cut out from the YouTube video. Zap the Pikachu is out. Sheriff the Snorlax is it. Fifth main team member. Sheriff the Snorlax. Welcome to the squad. I actually intended to catch the first Snorlax, that's why I was talking about being careful with the critical hits, which is why I was happy I was able to catch the second one pretty easily. Otherwise, I would have redone the fights. But we have Snorlax, who critically killed a Voltorb with Headbutt, which is a very strong move. 70 base power, 
normal type move, so it gets the same type of attack bonus. Snorlax has some really nice stats, so let's make use of those. And headbutt the other ball as well. The slightly bigger upside down Pokeball Pokemon. There we go. Now, Snorlax, as you can see, new headbutt, rest, and amnesia. It, I'd never used headbutt during my previous two battles. Against Hitmon Lee, I understand it using rest or amnesia because of a certain programming in the game. Actually, I'm not sure if that programming applies here. It only applies if Snorlax has smart AI. But maybe only gym leaders, lead force, and the champion have smart AI. Supposedly. Um, but only has three moves. One, one damage move and headbutt, which it never actually showed. But I'm going to give it a second one. Rock Slide. Remember back when we went to the Celadon department store, we went to the top floor, and we gave the girl a fresh water, a soda pop, and a lemonade. Now, the fresh water gave us Ice Beam, which Koops has been using very well. I'm not sure which of the one, which of the soda pop and the lemonade give Tri Attack or Rock Slide, doesn't really matter. We have Rock Slide, and our Sheriff knows the move. I got Rock Slide with the intention of teaching it to a future Pokemon, and that Pokemon being Sheriff the Snorlax. Alright, now with my fifth Pokemon obtained, we now have Koops, Amigo, Propane, Aragorn, and Sheriff. Who's member number six? I'll only say that I haven't been able to obtain this Pokemon as of right now. So if you, maybe if you know the game well, you look a bit into what things are available. Let me know what you think it might be. Which Pokemon do you think will be member number six? There's a decent amount of Pokemon that it could still be. Which one will it be? That is the question. No, wait, no, that was will it blend? I don't recommend blending a Snorlax, or especially not... Actually, hmm... You might actually be able to blend with the other Pokemon. Then against a living creature. Don't blend living creatures, people. Alright, Super Rod. There are three kinds of rods. The old rod, the good rod, and the super rod. But quite often I get a super rod first just because I have access to it first. Because good rod, you get in a location which is further south from here. Which you could also reach by going east from Celadon City via that Snorlax. Then you'd have the good rod early, but I took this route. So I have this one early. Having this Super Rod, I'm going to Celadon City. You might think, why would you go to Celadon City? You literally just went south of Route 12 where the Snorlax was. Just continue on. What are you doing? I have a reason to be here. Because there's a Pokemon I'd like to catch. <laughs> no, it's not my 16 member. That'll be a little later. What I'm going to do is get on my bicycle. Cycle, 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 cycle. Okay, done. We're gonna save the game. We're gonna fish in this pond until we find what we want. So, dear video game, if it wasn't clear yet, I am looking for a Pokemon here. Normally that works. It seems the curse has been broken. Maybe it was because I found Vulpix on the first try without seeing it. So maybe the second one will work. I was not looking for Slowpoke. Well, that would have been an interesting new member. I do not intend to use it. You know, I would like to let you hear the sound effect for Rock Slide. Very interesting combination of pretty high beeps. Including some slightly lower ones, which are actually still pretty high. I really like the sound of this move. Let's continue trying to find the thing I'm trying to find. Mm. 
Not sure how the child, the appearance rate is. Either twenty percent or maybe even five percent. So this might take a while. No, it didn't. Hello, Polly World. I was looking for you. Hmm. I don't have Thunder Wave anymore. Let's use Ducks. Ducks can pretty safely weaken it, unless it gets crits. I'm gonna use Peck. Ducks, please don't crit. Thank you. Now this one does have Hypnosis, which puts Ducks to sleep. But I'm gonna throw a Pokeball at it! Polymeryl, the tadpole Pokémon, capable of living in or out of water. When out of water, it sweats to keep its body slimy. You wanna give a nickname to Polymeryl? Oh, yes. I shall call this Polyworld Spook. Now, why did we catch this Polyworld? If you have very good memory, and I say it's... I already revealed what this thing is for in episode 5. Well, I didn't really reveal it. An NPC did. Spook the Polyworld has been added to the team, as you can see in the overlay. But it won't be sticking around here for very long. Because back in Cerulean City, there was this old man that, according to his wife, likes trading Pokémon. If you remember, he asked for a Polyworld. And I'm here to show off all the in-game trades, among many other things. So since we now had access to the Polyworld through the Super Rod, it was time to do the train. Then cable is connected, and we send the Polyworld to the old man. Polyworld was sent to Trainer. For Alka's Polyworld, Trainer sends Jinx. Trainer waves for Ryle as Jinx is transferred. And as with Mr. Mime and Farfetch, it's the only way to obtain Jinx in Pokemon Blue. Without trading. There we go. We now have a Jinx. A very powerful Ice and Psychic type Pokemon. Physical defenses aren't great. Special stat is really nice. Can learn Ice Punch, I believe, by level up Psychic through the TM that we got in Saffron City. It can be an amazing asset to your team. Purely by being Psychic type, it's already good. It does have some weaknesses due to its Ice typing, but the Ice type is really good against Flying, against Grass, and against a Dragon type that we haven't actually seen yet. But this is Lola the Jinx. And this is the last time we'll ever actually see Lola the Jinx. So let's get back to Route 12.